Hi everybody, I'm Kim Winter. I'm your host today. Thanks for joining us here at Logistics Executive TV. And by all means, go to Logistics Executive TV on YouTube for other podcasts that we're doing. Management insights, supply chain and leadership. So by all means today, I'm very pleased to be joined by Abhinav Chowdhury, CEO and co-founder of Ferro. Hey Abhinav, thanks for joining us. Hi Ken, good afternoon, good to be here. Excellent, thank you. And why don't you give us a bit of a heads up on Ferro and a little bit about your personal journey. Uh, so Ferro is a tech uh, slash SaaS artificial intelligence product company within freight and logistic uh, sector. Our vision is to eradicate and remove redundant and repetitive human coordination tasks, which goes uh, within freight and logistics industry. Uh, my background, I was uh, in Indian Army for 14 years, uh, took a retirement from rank of a major. I've served within uh, DHL Global Forwarding for five years. Uh, to understand the nuisance of artificial intelligence, did some courses from MIT in artificial intelligence and natural language processing and machine learning. Uh, found, co-founded uh, Ferro in 2018 and uh, here we are. Good stuff. Well, you guys are a, uh, a pretty bright and uh, bushy-tailed startup in the, in the tech space, in the freight and logistics industry. And uh, we're going to talk today a little bit about what's happening in the industry in this part of the world and, and further afield in technology. So very interested to get your perspective and a little bit about how you see uh, Ferro impacting and finding, providing solutions across the supply chain. So we've, we've witnessed a whole range of startups in the marketplace, especially around, around freight, uh, aggregators, digital forwarding, et cetera. Why don't you give us a bit of a heads up in terms of what impact you're looking to make on the industry and providing solutions across the sector? Yes, Kim, over the last 10 years, there has been an exorbitant rise of apps uh, for simpler industries and business to uh, customer sector, such as those in hotel bookings, flight or cab booking, uh, food ordering, and so on. Seeing these, uh, there was a wave of Me Too movement in freight and logistics uh, sector two of marketplaces and aggregators, and that happened across the globe. Ironically, uh, what was missed out there, uh, that freight and logistics industry is not as simple ecosystem as hotel booking, cab booking, or food ordering. Uh, there are thousand uh, folds more moving parts, if not less, in freight and logistics. And that is cumbersome to handle on any mobile app or cloud platform. Ferro's approach uh, is to manage all such moving complex parts by means of an omnipresent intelligent virtual assistant to put automation and optimization at grassroots level in logistics sector, where digitalization has already penetrated in varying stage. Okay, well, you've used an interesting term there I haven't heard before in this context about virtual assistant. So why not just another app or a cloud solution or an e-commerce approach to, for freight services? Talk to us a little bit more about the, uh, the virtual assistant approach. Well, Kim, just as in manufacturing industry, almost four decades back, robots moved in to take elementary tasks. The immediate requirement of logistics and freight industry is to embrace IDAs, intelligent virtual assistant. These are the smart intelligent bots to take elementary tasks of coordination to remove errors, queued up work, and remove costs substantially. For that reason, we are using natural language processing, natural language understanding, focusing on learning capabilities of uh, IBAs, anthropomorphic, what it is called, as humans do. Human beings are speaking beings, uh, like what we are doing, and they, they, they speak to communicate. The most natural thing is to let humans speak or chat to machines and software. And that is what Ferro's code approach is. Yeah, interesting. I mean, uh, it's a pretty exciting concept in technology. Um, how long have you been going now? Uh, how long has the business been up and running? So, uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic has been a true catastrophic event, a true black swan event, what it is called. 
So the penetration of technology uh, from top-down approach has been uh, good for us so far because all the senior managers and leaders have gone back to drawing board to have risk mitigation plans and plan on the AI strategy. So our products, which are in and around the NLP, the world's first IVF for freight and logistics, which is the common denominator for freight aggregation software for trucking, uh, TAME, which we, uh, an acronym for transportation asset management ERP, for sh which is actually enabling shippers to manage their all vendors for all logistics functions on WhatsApp, and Dash, which is uh, essentially a delivery management software, there, there has been a growth more than 200% month-on-month month for the last two quarters. Okay, well, thanks. So, so what you're saying to me, it sounds like this sort of technology is, is based and grounded in, in the whole process of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Is that correct or am I I'm off track? No, you are absolutely bang on target. Okay, so based on that, in the common sense approach, why do you think that nobody's really come up with this uh, solution previously? Kim, there is a massive disparity in digital quotient across industries. Also, this disparity is increasing very rapidly. Despite the digital quotient is going up, but the disparity is increasing. Unlike uh, the new technologies, AI implementation is a pure top-down approach. It is, it, is, it is pertinent to mention that only 6% of the companies in this region have an AI strategy in their growth and roadmap. Additionally, the apprehensions, which come within the mid-lower level of uh, hierarchy about the job losses, they, they have these, these are the bigger barriers to entry for AI products in the industry. Okay, so what have uh, what have players been doing before? I mean, there's there's many resilient operations out there. Uh, many companies have, of course, struggled during the last six or seven months or so. Um, but of the more resilient players, uh, if we just pan out a little bit, take a more helicopter view and just uh, park the technology piece. What's your view on the common denominators of, of some of the more successful companies? over the period that we've seen so far? I mean, if we take, for example, the shipping sector, um, the shipping sector, uh, we'll talk to e-commerce shortly, but the shipping sector itself is quite surprisingly to many uh, organisations and to many of us practitioners and executives in the sector and the supply chain have done remarkably well during this period, um, not necessarily relying on technology from what we can see. So what is your view on what some of the more resilient companies have achieved and why? Kim, primarily the resilient players had uh, already a very robust digital slash AI strategy and they have leveraged technology to build a business resilience implementation already there and they, have, they were on this journey prior to a COVID-19 scenario. The focus for them had been to remove errors and inefficiencies by automating these redundant tasks and I mean privately uh, the solution remains the same, the end result remains the same, but their approach had been different. The clients uh, who already have been into resilient, like what you asked for the shipping industry, uh, there have been various industries who have uh, seen a boom, I would say, during COVID-19, because primarily for the bullish uh, aspects of the consumer behavior, warehousing right now is all-time high, the last mile delivery is all-time high. And over there, uh, healthcare for that matter is an all-time high. So logistics is a sum of products, is, is, is at the end of the day, sum of product for all that. But uh, overall, the, in the sector is still having a lot of concerns. And to remove those concerns and make the disruption proof as not an impact, but the Core, the core belief and the core plan among uh, among organizations, there's yet a lot of homework to be done on on AI strategies. And this is this is just one product of logistics and freight which we are bringing in. There are IVAs which are moving in healthcare. There there are move there are IVAs which are moving in HR, uh, elementary aspects. There are IVAs which are moving in e-commerce sector. 
so such sort of such sort of uh, products once embraced these organizations are just focusing on their core unique differentiating aspects okay so we hear a lot about uh, with technology in particular artificial intelligence and the utilization of data um, the challenge around, you know, is this good for labor supply or is it uh, replacing the human effect inside a business, um, human hands-on? What's your view of the type of technology that Ferro is looking to introduce um, because of the significant impact that it should have, according to what you're telling us? Um, how, how will it impact jobs? Will it, will it improve the situation and call for more technology-minded people? Or will it replace the human element inside a business? Kim, this is a very, very valid question. There's, there's always a general sense of apprehension of job losses with AI products all across the sector. However, we see it not over short term, uh, but over a longer duration where jobs will be upscaled and not lost. Uh, case in point uh, is, is, is industry revolution one. When the jobs at the farms, everybody was uh, concerned that the jobs at the farms will be lost by the farming tractors or the vehicles. Uh, but jobs for those farmers were not lost. They were upskilled when these farmers became assembly line engineers. So overall, each industry revolution does this. And this will happen this time too. Where each and every freight forwarder or logistics or shipping uh, uh, stakeholder is having jobs which are related to NLP engineers, machine learning engineers, data engineers, data scientists. And these jobs are going to get, going to get uh, upskilled, I would say. Okay. So from your perspective, you're obviously looking to grow. Um, you're developing the organization, developing its reach. Uh, what sort of people would you be looking to bring into your organization? What are some of the characteristics that are going to be important to Ferro? as it develops its business? What are the types of characteristics that you're looking for in new recruits? Well, again, given my background from Army, our core principles at Ferro uh, have been of humility, hunger, and honesty. 3H, what we call that. We will be growing our team almost four folds in next one year, where we are on always uh, for the lookout for members who challenge the status quo and carry that uh, fire in the belly. The core principle uh, for team is to deep dive in each and every concept at, at each and every micro level. And these small steps in the federal journey has to be tracked in an entire uncharted territory. I mean, we have already filed two patents. Uh, we will be filing for two more patents. And such a journey can only be successful when the ground basics of team members in respective fields are the best among the best, the cream de la cream. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And, and of course, underlying that, some basic technical skills that you'd be looking for as well. I mean, it's, I'm very impressed that you've gone with the soft skills and the character skills and the types of behavioral skills, because from a recruitment perspective, with us being an executive search firm, we're seeing a very heavy slant of companies leaning into those sorts of skills moving forward, the agility, the, the ability to pivot, to think outside the box uh, with people coming into organizations as perhaps uh, versus more traditional uh, skill sets that people are looking for. Nonetheless, uh, technical skills from your perspective, what should anybody looking at this, uh, at this uh, particular video uh, say to themselves about the technical skills they should have? So there will be two uh, major portions for the technical skill. The one spectrum would be uh, for freight and logistic professionals. We require veterans because veterans are the one uh, and the subject matter experts can only give knowledge to TIA, to the intelligent virtual assistant because that knowledge needs to be gained. One omnipresent universal transportation coordinator in all uh, modes. So we are looking at that one end of the spectrum and at other end, we are looking for that young blood who's coming in uh, with multi-scale talent and moving into freight and logistics and is able to bring a multimodal uh, skill set on, on bringing the best in other industries where, where a lot is happening in artificial intelligence. 
natural language processing to freight and logistics. On the core technical side, uh, we would be requiring an army of uh, natural language processing engineers and we will be increasing a team of 25 uh, machine learning data scientists and R&D experts to 140 plus uh, by end of 2021. Sure. So, so uh, just in regards to skill sets, um, our corporate advisory team here is taking on a, a group of new people for some new contracts that are coming on board. And uh, I noticed that they're very much looking for uh, people from outside of traditional logistics, transport and warehousing design, which is where the, these particular projects are. And they're looking for people with new ideas and transferable skills. Um, and in fact, I was reading yesterday that uh, a major Australian company is reaching out that handles uh, transport, ground transport and railway uh, development are looking to pick up a whole lot of pilots out of Qantas and out of Emirates, from what I've been hearing uh, colloquially. And uh, they're looking to see what those transferable skills are from highly trained individuals who've been flying aircraft, pilots, first officers, engineers, et cetera, and seeing if they can bring them in uh, into uh, road transport and into rail in particular. What sort of transferable skills do you think you might, what industries you might be able to attract people from to come into your sector if they're short, which they may well be, in the particular uh, technology that you're looking to bring in, given that it's brand new technology? So I'll, for transferable skills uh, from other industries, I'm, uh, those are related core to the, the core of the, any business function, which are related to the customer service aspects or uh, building up uh, any procurement functions. As I mentioned that uh, the core business functions which are executed by intelligent virtual assistant remains across the entire spread of logistics and freight from top to the entire uh, downstream. I mean, we are, we are looking at the complex movements of the freight as well as uh, the simplest and high quantum movements of e-com or retail distribution. Okay. Uh, the transferable skills uh, will be related to uh, the business functions which happen within from top to uh, the downstream aspects. Another key issue on a transferable skills as what you mentioned on uh, the Australian example is always on the regional part also. So transferable, transferability uh, aspects has to move in from that huge knowledge repository which exists within the region as such. Uh, we all know that uh, customs procedures, local regional procedures, taxes and freight aspects that varies from country to country and from state to state. These aspects will be something which we would be looking to expand as and when we grow uh, region to region. Okay. Well, I guess that leads us into a bit of a segue into really um, what the plans are before we uh, finish up today. I'm really interested to know what your five-year plan looks like. Uh, five years is a long time these days because things happen so quickly and technology in particular and the freight and, and logistics and supply chain sectors is, is horrendously mobile and fast developing. But if I can just touch you for a second to share with us what your aspirations are, what your thoughts are in terms of vision moving forward in the three to five-year cycle, where do you think you can get to? Uh, okay, it's a very valid question. Five years is a long uh, term, but we are making plans uh, for that. Ferro's technology is built for a vertical and horizontal scalability. On horizontal aspects, we plan to expand in uh, different regions. On products, uh, those are proven already on all aspects within, uh, within UAE and uh, Middle East region. On vertical aspects, we are spanning all top freight ERPs and cloud solutions within logistics and freight to augment uh, with our AI products so that such current market logistics and freight ecosystem becomes more intelligent. These ERPs cannot be thrown and uh, a smartphone can be procured. So we are uh, for vertical, uh, vertical uh, scalability, we are planning to make these all uh, ERPs smart ERPs. Okay. Well, thanks for that. I know that there's been some fairly significant interest from 
um, some major players uh, around the type of technology that Fiero is introducing. Um, as far as I'm aware, you're not in a position to really talk much about that today. Um, if you are, but let me know. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll raise a question for you, which I always raise with many of our guests and executives that come on and join us. And that is, uh, in short form answer, what do you see moving forward as we get to the ends of the end of 2020 and into 21 under the current challenging but exciting opportunities throughout the supply chain sector? Uh, what, what do you see as the most pressing two or three issues for the industry moving forward? What do companies really need to focus on to maintain growth or first safety, but then growth and development moving forward over the next six to 12 months? What are, what are your views on that? Again, the margins uh, with the trade forwarding and logistics are getting pressed day by day. Competition, uh, as we see, will get fierce for customer service levels and procurement costs and freight. In such times, uh, we very firmly believe that automation in logistics industry will be the leading differentiating factor. Uh, also, with substantial investment uh, gone by organizations on ERPs, the hunt will be there by uh, organizations to convert these ERPs, as I mentioned, into smart ERPs. Our approach, uh, we are very happy that was validated uh, by Uber Freight also. Where uh, after eight years of operations by Uber Freight, they have converted the fulfillment business into a, uh, an enterprise uh, software solution provision where they are handing over the same technology that they created to generate revenue, what they do in the passenger segment of the vehicles, along with the transporters and the single owners within the US. Additionally, our idea approach was again authenticated by giants like Oracle, where they launched within the month of July in uh, Oracle Logistics Digital Assistant, OLDA. So we are very confident and very firm that we are on the right track. Good hope. Well, you're certainly in a, uh, in a, in a group of uh, very fast-moving entrepreneurial organizations. Um, before I let you go, I'm going to ask you a generic question I, I like uh, to, to ask of many of the executives that we bring on. And I really want you to pan out and think about the journey that you've been on. As I say, you've had an impressive background, both from a logistics supply chain and a military perspective. Um, I'm sure you'll carry many of those, uh, many of those uh, nuances into the business with you. Um, but from an entrepreneurial perspective, uh, what can you share with other entrepreneurs about some of the lessons you've learned and some of the tips that you've got for companies who are uh, moving forward over the next six to 12 months, whether they are well established or whether they're fairly new uh, companies off the block. So tell us a little bit about what your thoughts are about uh, sharing with, with entrepreneurs about maybe some of the lessons you've learned um, and uh, moving forward, what they can take from your, your examples. Well, I would say uh, we are in very exciting times right now, which is going to get much more exciting in the next decade. Uh, how uh, we at Ferro uh, perceive logistics and supply chain is that it is going to get revolutionized dramatically. Last mile delivery versus drones or human coordination versus IVAs or blockchain based uh, trusted transactions. Much more is going to come in the next five years. Uh, for this journey, uh, some learnings that I would suggest to, uh, to, to all the team members, all the budding entrepreneurs, uh, would be three aspects. Firstly, uh, it ha we have to focus on the pain points of industry. Uh, till the time the product is not a life-saving medicine, but some multivitamins, it is not going to fly off. Secondly, uh, we have to start in logistics and freight uh, with a hyper-local solution and prove it in all aspects before we go regional or global. And last but not the least, uh, the entrepreneurs, I think, should not carry a mentality to disrupt. They should carry a mentality to stabilize. I believe that is what is required in current times. Interesting. Very refreshing and uh, quite unique outlook and you know, very exciting, fascinating technology. We really look forward to hearing more from yourself and the rest of your team. We wish you all the best. 
with uh, with your launch and uh, the way you're moving into the market. So, uh, Abhinav Chowdhury, uh, CEO and founder of Ferro Technologies, thank you and, and thank you for joining us. Honor was mine, okay. Thank you, thank you. Excellent, thanks Abhinav. And thanks everybody, thanks for watching. By all means, check us out on uh, Logistics Executive TV on YouTube. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us. We wish you all well, stay safe out there and by all means, join us again. Thanks a lot.